Tell us what, uh, start with what you do know, and then tell us what you actually think it all means. Well, we, we know that the sensors that were loaded on the, on the original balloon that was shot down off Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, uh, were not weather sensors. You know, we, we all talk about imaging and the press is focused on imaging. And I think it's important to think about what a stationary balloon loaded with quantum sensors can, could actually map. So um, I believe that those sensors uh, were mapping the gravitational field and the structure of the Earth, and it can do that down about a kilometer. Do you remember where it was where it was sitting over Montana? It was sitting over our Minuteman uh, missile base, their ICBM base. So uh, I think that that Chinese spy balloon was mapping the underground architecture of our um, one of our most valuable assets, and uh, uh, the Minuteman ICBM missiles in Montana. So you know this is this is a problem for uh, Sino U.S. relations. I mean, we just had Congress vote 419 to zero uh, on uh, uh, condemning the brazen Chinese spy balloon. I'm not sure we could get this Congress to vote 419 to zero on the sun setting in the West. Uh, so it is one place where our lawmakers are starting to really think more about our national security. So what would that information allow them to do? And, and is it do we have to think of it as, as some type of ominous thing? Wouldn't we like to know? the infrastructure of, uh, of a similar facility in China? And, and aren't we probably trying to figure it out one way or another as well? Or is, sure, this, a, is this a hostile, is this like a, uh, the first uh, foray of a, of a hostile act? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a direct incursion into our airspace. That's why the Biden administration uh, decided to shoot it down. We can't be armchair quarterbacks about whether we should have shot it down over Montana or, or the Midwest or the East Coast. I think they really wanted to wait until they could shoot it down over uh, fairly shallow water. Uh, and we had catch boats out there. So, I, again, I think I think our government actually did its job. We sent jamming signals up to the balloon as soon as we found it. And, and we're 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 now studying the contents of, of what we could reclaim uh, at the at the moment. And, you know, when, you, when we talk about what relations between uh, the U.S. and China are, there's still this big gap between Wall Street and the IC. You know, the, the director of national intelligence submits a report every year uh, to Congress detailing the next year's threats, the largest threats to U.S. national security. China's topped that list for many years. And yet on Wall Street here, we can't wait to buy the next IPO in Hong Kong of a Chinese company. Uh, at some point in time, Joe, this has got to stop. So the, uh, you figure that the information they gathered was sent back, so it, they didn't need to retrieve it from, it, they already have it, whatever they, they gathered. So you, you've talked about uh, farmland in, in cr close proximity to sensitive military bases well being bought by China. So is, is this all part of the same, um, I guess, plan for them? And it, does it necessarily mean that they're going to use this information down the road? Or do they, we want it to, I'm sure we're gathering similar information. We want to know. It doesn't mean we're going to start something with China, just if we gather intelligence. Yeah, I mean, Joe, it, it, you look at, they play an asymmetric warfare game. I mean, how they wrote the book on asymmetric warfare. And we allow them access to our social media. We allow them access to buying big swaths of land between our most active military bases and our borders. We allow Huawei to sell uh, um, telecom equipment uh, cheaper than it costs to, to manufacture it in rural areas around all of our military bases. We still haven't ripped all the Huawei equipment out around all of our rural military bases. They ex the Chinese government exploits every nook and cranny of our openness, Joe. And what we've got to figure out at some point in time is that We've made a bet on China back uh, when, when Kissinger uh, uh, decided to go over there in the early 70s and pivot from Russia to China. Uh, and we made that bet hoping that if we invited their students into our universities and we invite their uh, people to travel in the West, that they would see a better way of living and a better way of growing an economy. And uh, all they've done is go the other way with Xi Jinping and his, his death grip on the population, running it as a totalitarian uh, almost dictator. And so we have to realize that the bet yep. that we made, it was a good bet at the time. It turned out to be a bad bet. And now on Wall Street and corporate America, what we've got to do is start going the other way. 
uh, and, and not relying on a government that doesn't share our values, that is clearly the number one threat to our national security. Well, Wall Street must wake up.